Well, here we are. Without further ado, -do, I present to you the $10 piece of software that built every product that I've made and enabled my entire six-figure 3D printing business. Go ahead and open up another tab on your web browser or go down into the description down on this video and you will find a link to the app. It is morpheapp.com and this is it. This is the software that I've been using since the beginning. Why is it so easy? Because it was originally designed for the iPad. When they conceptualized it, it was very, very push button, touch this, touch that. It needed to be simple in the interface, but they also were aiming at children originally. It was uh, an educational app, and it was really meant to get kids interested in 3D printing, but it still remains one of the easiest to use, and it doesn't look like they're targeting children anymore uh, these days, but let's go ahead to the Mac and Windows download, and it's still ten dollars so just to let you know I don't get any affiliate income they don't have an affiliate program if you haven't already downloaded it you can download it and try it I believe let's see if they have a trial maybe not so I'm going to the download and it looks like if you're at the website you just have to add to cart uh, feel free to try the iPad version I have no real experience with that I've only been using it on my computer for years but let's launch it and let's get going so what I'm going to do today is show you how easy it is to build an object that you will then print. Over here on the side of Morphe you have a bunch of different pre-built shapes to start from and you can just try anything. You've got pre-built letters for working with type. What I'm going to do, let's say I want to make a headphone stand. Just a simple stand for some headphones. What I'm going to do, let's see, I want a circular base, so let's take this, and it's just a, a cylinder, but it's actually pretty small. So there's my printing plane, and you can see this is actually pretty small. So I'm going to click right here, and this is where I find all the adjustments for resizing the object. I'm going to scroll down, and I have a diameter slider. I'm changing the diameter. Very, very simple. So. How do I know how big this is going to be? What I need to do is enable my rulers. So I'm going to enable ruler. I'm going to enable alignment too because I always use that. And now when I click on it, I have millimeters, 127.1. That is the diameter. Or I can switch it to inches, and that is a 5-inch disc. So I'll go ahead and call that an appropriate base. How tall is this? The blue dimension is the z-axis in 3D printing. Here that is 0.28, so I'm going to want that to be just a little bit bigger to make it a more stable base. So I'm going to do a height of, let's see, maybe not quite an inch. Let's do 0.75. And the reason that I'm doing this is just conceptually, I want it to be a sturdy thing and it's fighting the weight of headphones. So the base needs to have some weight to it. So I'm going to have that be the base. Now I'm going to do another cylinder. And this is where I want to show you there are two main concepts when you're building, and when you understand this, it was like a light bulb moment for me. I was like, oh my god, 3D design is seriously this simple? Uh, basically, you have addition and subtraction. In this instance, I'm going to turn this into a pole that is mounted to the base, and I'm going to join them together, which would be an additive function. So I'm going to click back over here. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker, so let's do maybe half an inch thick, and then I'm going to set the height much higher. So you see I've made my pole. Now I want that to be in the center. I enabled my rulers and alignment over here, and if I didn't enable my alignment, I wouldn't be able to do this cool thing here, which is very same functions that you find in text alignment. We have center, side, side. I'm going to do center, center. And now, this is completely centered. So let's see how tall I made this. That's six inches tall. Average headphones give that a little bit more height. So, oops, undo, didn't want to increase the diameter. And let's go 
maybe seven and a half. That'll do. Combining these two objects into one single object is very easy. Select one object, then select the other, and now go over here to your object menu and where it says combining objects, you will want to do a merge. Well, there's actually two ways to group objects and I'll show you the difference. There's merge and then there's group. Group is a temporary assignment that you can always undo later. See how we have group and ungroup? So if I hit group, I now have these two items grouped to where if I select anywhere on either object, it moves around as one item. This is useful because later, if I create other things, do different stuff, I can still ungroup this object if I need to. If I do a merge, see how they both change to the same color? This is now one object in the software, and should I do some other things after this, I will not be able to ungroup this object. The only way to ungroup it would be to undo and back up every step all the way back to where I grouped it and then undo it. And you get about 50 undos with Morphe, so sometimes that's just not possible. So for right now, so th that's one basic combining objects to create a complex object. The next is to use subtraction. I'm going to ungroup this really quick or unmerge it back up and undo because I don't want to permanently merge this object yet. So this is where I'm going to show you the second major function, which is subtraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think for a minute what would be the best way to cradle headphones and probably some kind of parabola. So here we go. We've got this horseshoe looking thing. So, oops, I clicked on it. And if you see, I clicked on it so it automatically appeared. So I've got that down there. You can either drag it from here and it comes from the top if you drag it from the tools or if you just click on it, it appears down below. Uh, it's the way it's always been kind of funky, but all right. I'm going to manipulate this to be what I want, which in order to cradle headphones, it needs to be facing the other direction. So I'm going to go under the rotation settings and where it says 90 degrees, I rotated it twice and it's now pointing upward. Now, as I can, that, that's kind of small for my headphones. So what I'm going to do is make that larger. And in this case, it is not a simple, anytime you have a cylinder, the settings are a little bit different than if you have a more complex shape. Here I have all three of my dimensions and I'm going to hold the shift button and drag one and that scales them all. So very similar to other software that you might've used. And I'm going to now place this and center all of these. All right, now what am I going to do here? What I'm actually going to do is move it upwards. I'm going to stretch this dimension to where it's coming out like that. And now I don't want this to be so tall. I actually want to chop some of this off right here and there's two ways to handle that but I don't want to make this part thin so let me see so what's interesting about these shapes and it might just be this funky U it's not centering exactly the way I would want it to and so I'm gonna to have to assist that to be in the position where I want it looks like it's going to center on one axis, but not perfectly on the other. That'll happen sometimes with some complex shapes. And there we go. I fixed the problem. And now watch this. So let's say I don't want that to be quite as tall. I can do this, but look what happens. It flattens this out and makes it maybe thinner than I want it to be because now it's not going to fit well right there. So I'm going to undo, take it back and we're going to do subtractive function. And what I'm going to do here is choose almost any shape, but this is just the most convenient, the rectangle, and I'm going to lower it. Oh, didn't mean to lower it all the way, but I'm going to basically put it near the level where, come on, there we go. Grab it. And now I'm going to change the size of this like that. And I'm going to change these dimensions. And I'm totally just 
grabbing it to make it bigger than what I'm about to subtract. And let me get a good angle on what I'm about to do for you. All right, so I'm about to chop that U in half. As you can see, I'm lowering down to where this shape is now penetrating that U, and I'm going to cut it away, subtract, and there we go. I've got my headphone stand. Now, do I want to make it a little bit more fancy? Maybe. Let's see what I can do down here in shapes. So if I'm, if I'm correct, there was a, let's see. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to see about this octagonal base. Remove that cylinder. I wonder what this would look like if I flattened it a bit. First, I'm going to make it much, much larger. To where the sides are comparable to what they were before. There we go, five inches. And now, I'm going to scale the Z dimension down. Let's see, I might increase the thickness just slightly. Now watch this. I don't want the bottom. I want the bottom to be perfectly flat. So what I'm going to do now is the same thing I did before, but just to the bottom of this. So, all right. Drop her down. Presto change much bigger -o. Now I'm going to take this, and you can probably see what I'm doing, but just in case you can't, I'm creating a cutoff point that will get me the base that I want. And I'm going to cut this off, do a subtract, voila, now I have a flat base. I kind of like that. So because these weren't perfectly centered and I had to center them, I'm going to group it. So I selected both of them, and to select both of them, you just select one, select the next one, now you have them both selected. Over here on your shapes menu, you have group. I grouped these together so that this would stay exactly where I placed it, since it wasn't placing perfectly in the software. Now, I move it over like that, and watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a merge, and now all three pieces are one piece. Now, do I want to print it like this? Probably not. Uh, this was just for the sake of showing you all those particular functions. I'm going to undo and back up to where they're all separate pieces again. And what I actually want to do to make this work is to print these in separate pieces. So what I'm going to do now is take this all right I've got my base I've got my shaft and my shaft can be created in one of two ways but I think probably the easiest way would be to do this I'm gonna ungroup these and I'm gonna punch a hole through that so I'm gonna copy this so that I have another one because as soon as I use it to cut, it will be gone. Now it's in the center. I'm going to pull a subtract. And it leaves me with a nice hole. And you can see where I'm going with this. So later on, I've got two choices. Um, probably what I would do is just super glue this together if I was making something at home. But you can also make more advanced things like we can put threads on this little puppy and turn it into a screw situation where the parts screw together. That can be done for both the base and the rod. And so now I'm going to copy another one. And what I want to do here is because I want them to fit together, 
I know this from experience, in order for this rod to slide down into a hole in that base, what I actually need to do to make that fit and work right is to make it just slightly bigger and usually by the size of your nozzle. So I'm using a 0.4 nozzle, so what I want to do is make this at least 0.4 millimeter larger. Just a simple rule of thumb that I find works. This might not hold true depending on the type of plastic and the type of printer you're using, but I can guarantee that it's somewhere within 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters you're going to find the right size where it goes down in with some force, but not, you know, it's not too tight to fit. You want it to be snug. So let's do that. So this is 7.5. No, that's the height. Where is my diameter? 0.51. And let's see, that's inches. I'm going to switch over to millimeters to be more accurate. So there we have 13.1 millimeters. So I'm going to do 13.4. And I'm going to start there, and then I'm going to test it out. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to make it just slightly larger. But I'm going to start at 13.4, go up to 13.5 if need be, if the parts don't fit together, that kind of thing. Uh, this is how you dial in your tolerances and get different parts fitting that need to fit. So let's change the diameter. So what I'm going to do here, instead of just using the diameter, I'm going to enable my scaling options and I'm going to change it here manually. 13.4, 13.4. So now we have 13.4. Make sure those are perfectly centered again. I'm kind of OCD like that. Now, subtract. And I've got my hole. Now watch this. I'm going to group those together for fun. And I'm going to center these, and we're going to take a peek. And if you can see, there's just a little bit of space, which is enough when you, when you print them out, that it should slide in with just a little bit of resistance, which would be ideal. So now I've got three parts to print. And if I've got a big enough print bed, you can, you can print it all at the same time. So let's ungroup. Now, from experience, a rod like this is, um, it needs to be totally solid to be strong, and it will look the cleanest if you print it standing up. So, in this case, I would need to make sure that my printer has at least 190.5 worth of travel in the upwards dimension. And this, I know from experience, will not print well as it sits. It's going to print much better this way. Let's rotate it. Go down to our rotation tools. I'm going to hit 90 degrees. Oh, it's not really doing what I want. So what I'm going to have to do here is a different kind of rotation. Set it one way. I'm going to have to enable rotate. And this is where things get tricky. I'm going to have to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm glad I'm showing you this because this is actually one of the more complex things to do, which is rotate something on its side like that if it's not aligned like that from its creation. So I'm going to get rid of my rotation graphic. We're going to lower it to the ground. And what we're going to do. I'm going to get really close up on it and make sure that there's no spaces that I can see underneath. Sometimes I have to move it. See, look, there's what I'm talking about. I can see a little drop shadow right there, which means it needs to change angle slightly because it's not totally resting on the ground. And that'll mean when I try to print it, there will be space in the first layer and it won't print correctly. Believe me from experience. So I'm going to go to rotate again 
And I'm going to give it just a little nudge in this direction. Trying to get both sides resting without shadow as much as possible. Let's try to drop it. All right. All right, that looks like it did it. And what I'm looking for is this software puts a shadow in between the surface and the thing when there's space in between it. And it looks like that thing is now perfectly resting on the print bed, which is what I want. There we go. Three separate parts. If we have a big enough print plate, we can save it all as one pile and print it all at the same time. Otherwise, what we'd want to do is separate it into three files and print it which that I would do, I highlight all of them, and I do a command C on the Mac, which is copy. On Windows, you would use whatever the equivalent function is, command C. And then what you're going to do is delete each one, basically leave just one, save the file, save as STL for final 3D printing, give it a title. The STL file is the format that you are going to take into another piece of software that I'll show you later that prepares it for your 3D printer. This creates the 3D file. So I did that, now I'm gonna undo, and I just basically, through process of elimination, get each one into separate files if I wanna do it like that. Or I just save this as is. So what I'm going to do, I'll save Morphe. I'm going to call this headphone rack. And let's put it on my desktop. Then I'm going to save the STL file for 3D printing. Headphone rack. All right. So that is basic 3D modeling. Uh, using a piece of software that was designed to be as simple as they could possibly make it. Morphe is totally capable of building more complex things. So let me show you a few of those real quick. Let's open up some of my past projects. I'll just go straight to my cigar molds. These can be kind of complex too. Let's see. Voila. And this was created in a very similar process. To just kind of give a, a brief summary, I created a single curved rectangular block that had rounded edges, and then I separated it into two, and the rest is just kind of using subtractive shapes to create everything from the logos. In fact, let me open up my cigar mold template so you get an idea of what it looks like when I go to create a new custom cigar mold. Template items, V4, V4 half stack. Here's my cigar mold template. I've got my company logo, the gauge size, different sizes and shapes of cigars to work with, and I basically just alter them and then cut them away from this brick. So there's my cigar mold template. And I would just literally cut these away. Let me do that real quick so you can get an idea. Ungroup those so that I can actually cut them away individually. And if I wanted to knock these out and create a new mold, after resizing them or replacing them with whatever shape that I want, I just subtract away. And you'll notice this is kind of cool. That's like a more advanced thing in Morphe. I grouped these together so that they would stay there. Now I can subtract them all at once and I get the little face funnel. And boom, we've got, that's the magic of how I create a custom cigar mold. Let's open up. Another file. I wonder if I've still got. Yeah. I made a trophy for a cigar competition. And I'll show how I made that in more advanced tutorials. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with Morphe when you put your mind to it. And then you can manifest those results in the 3D printing world. A lot of people don't know that it's the 3D design kind of is that simple. It's additive and it's subtractive. You don't really have to know the math of everything unless you want to. If you want an exact part and you're manufacturing that, it can get pretty complex. But the basic idea is almost anyone can create something cool and make it. So that's it. That's the end of my introduction to Morphe, the easiest 3D design app known to man. Go ahead and download it, play around with it. If you have any questions, 
please drop me a comment. I would love to help out. If you'd love to see more content and want to see me keep making more of these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. And onward to my next video, or the rest of the videos, where I'm going to show you how I automated my 3D printing process at home, how I eventually outsourced my 3D printing process, and then finally, how I created a chatbot to handle almost everything so that I can go fishing while my stuff is printing. See you next time.